Thank now you. the next presenter that is a chairperson from Gujarat ISMSICS, Dr. Purvi Bhagat, who is again expert in glaucoma. She has combined that technique of glaucoma and SICS all together. And let's see how she tackles glaucoma and SICS. Dr. Purvi, please. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for that introduction. And I'm glad that among the inclusion of uh, young ophthalmologists, you have included me today also. So it's a pleasure to be counted among all those. Uh, I'll be talking on SICS and the glaucoma. And we all know that both these conditions actually affect more commonly the elderly and they can be independent entities within the same eye or they can be a result of each other or they can be associating uh, presenting features of some local or systemic comorbidity. So their presentations could be very varied. Now, when we talk of SICS and glaucoma, the most important thing that we need to uh, start with is the preoperative uh, assessment. It has to be very thorough and detailed. Now, what are the things that you'll actually look at? The first and foremost is when we talk of glaucoma is the conjunctiva. So you have to be very careful in the selection of the, your site where you are going to plan your SICS. Uh, you have to keep a virgin healthy conjunctiva for a future filtering surgery in these cases. Also see for the anterior chamber depth because if the AC is shallow, you will have to use highly retentive, good quality viscoelastics. And also keep in mind the possibility of a malignant glaucoma postoperatively in these cases. With a shallow anterior chamber, you have to be very careful of your IOL power calculation to avoid any post-operative refractive surprises. Also check for the adequacy of midriasis, especially if your patient has been on long-term myotics, has posterior synechia, or is a case of pseudo-exfoliation. Talking of pseudo-exfoliation, you also have to check for the corneal endothelium health, check for the zonular stability, and keep in mind the post-operative copsular contractions. So we just saw that case of phimosis. So you have to plan your excess and other strategies accordingly. If the pupil is very rigid and the zonules appear weak, you might even go for an early cataract surgery rather than waiting for the cataract to get white or brown. It goes without saying that when a patient has glaucoma, before you plan your SICS, you have to confirm the adequacy of glaucoma control and do a repeat preoperative thorough glaucoma evaluation. The most important thing here will be a thorough preoperative counseling of the patient as well as the relatives for the prognosis because your SICS may improve the visual acuity perhaps, but it is not going to improve the visual fields and also counsel them for the long-term follow-up for the continued glaucoma which is going to exist. Now, what are the general principles? If you feel that your surgery is going to be, have some manipulation or post-operative inflammation, it is advisable to stop the PG analogs. And if the patient is on meiotics, always stop them at least one to four weeks prior to allow for adequate midriasis. But during this phase, do not forget to substitute with systemic drugs. Keep the pre-op IOP as low as possible. You can even use injection mannitol preoperatively, in, especially in cases when there is a shallow AC. Considering the anesthesia, avoid large volumes of local anesthesia and too much of a local massage, especially if there is a filtering bleb present in that case. In cases of split fixation, avoid adrenaline, and you may even consider topical anesthesia in these cases. Now, what are the surgical options you have? The most common options are either SICS only if your glaucoma is well controlled with drugs. You can do a combined surgery, SICS with trap if both the entities are moderately advanced and you need attention for both of them. Or you could have done a prior filtering surgery uh, when the glaucoma needs primary attention and the cataract is just minimal and you can later it follow, follow it up with an SICS. And what are the surgical pearls for these cases? As I said, the conjunctiva is the most important issue for these cases. So always preserve the superior conjunctiva as much as possible. And that is why you'll always have to go for a temporal or a supratemporal SICS. Especially if there is a superior filtering bleb, see that you avoid damage to that bleb at all times of your surgery. If you have used any pupillary expansion devices, keep in mind that it may lead to pigment dispersion, inflammation, a floppy iris, even synechia formation, which can have an effect on the post-operative intraocular pressure. So keep in mind that you'll have to monitor the IOP very vigorously in the post-op period. Always meticulously remove all OVDs at the end of your surgery. And if you have planned for a combined surgery, always keep in mind that a wound closure, however small your sur surgical wound may be, it is necessary because your TRAB-induced hypotony will open your valve, however small it is. And again, in cases of combined surgery, use some form of a wound modulation. And finally, a concluding slide on the post-operative pulse. If you have done only an SICS, do not forget to reevaluate the glaucoma in the post-op period, reset a new baseline, and modify your treatment accordingly. 
if you have done only a glaucoma surgery prior, remember that the anterior segment dynamics would be altered. Wait for a gap of three months, do a repeat biometry, and then plan your SICs. And if you have done a combined surgery, avoid digital massage unless and until you're sure of that the cataract wound has healed well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful presentation. I think two difficult things and uh, operating together is a nice challenge. And most of the surgeons, they will definitely try this technique.